welcome everyone to the latest haunted edition of Vox Vomitus. <laughs> I am your host. I am your ghost. Oh my God, you see what I'm doing here? You Jennifer. just now thought of it too. I just thought of it. Um, I'm your uh, host ghost, ghost host, Jennifer Ann Gordon, the author of the Kindle Award winning novel, Beautiful, Frightening and Silent, as well as Pretty Ugly and the Hotel series. Joining me today, as always, is my co-ghost, Alison Martin, the author of The Bourbon Books, which includes Dibs, Since September, Move on Melinda, and Climb the Salmon Ladder. Joining us today, don't knock anything over, is Clay McLeod Chapman, the <laughs> author of Ghost Eaters. Welcome, Clay. Hey, everybody. How's it going? <laughs> Hello, Clay. Good, good. <laughs> Clay, thanks for being here with us. Uh, I have to take off my ghost shroud because I wanted to get a better look at your hat. I yeah, my uh, my children helped uh, pick my costume for the night. Oh, but, uh, oh. I, I don't think I can. I can't be in the screen and wear it. <laughs> I know it's, it's a, uh, your costume's like kind of tall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna divest. But, yeah. <laughs> It's, the hat is on in spirit. See, and, and Alan loves our costumes. He loves everyone's costumes. Well, thank you. <laughs> we sort of try. We're not really sure. We're <laughs> it's really difficult because sometimes books are just, they don't lend themselves as easily to um, props and costumes the way the ghost eaters did. Because yeah. we could have a little bit of everything. Ghosts, mushrooms, mushrooms, capsules that oh might be. Girl. Hey, and everybody a, came. A little gravestone. I, I just because we're here and we're sharing. I, mm -hmm. I have a ghost in a bottle. Can I? <gasps> How did that, you get a ghost in a bottle? I, I, I caught a ghost in a little. That was bottle. a very good job. Don't show my kid. He'll be like, I'm going to put that in the containment unit because I'm Egon Spengler. <laughs> He's seven. Um, yeah. I would I would still be doing that if I had a containment center. So. <laughs> he has the blow up proton pack in the full outfit. Um, yeah, we don't put it in my camera for a reason. <laughs> so Clay, thanks again. You're here. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself and a little bit about uh, the ghost eaters. Oh man. And you can okay. even talk about the fact that you're also like a fancy comic book writer. <laughs> fancy. That's the first time I've ever gotten that one i'll take yeah. it um, fancy I'll and comic fancy. book writer very rarely go together but <laughs> um I, i'm hey i'm clay and uh what can i say i'm a virginia boy but i live in new york now i've been in new york for like 25 ish years and um <laughs> You know, I was, I, I always wanted to be a writer. I was pretty, uh, pretty bad at everything else. Probably, you know, uh, I don't know. Aren't you a college professor? <laughs> yeah, well, there's, yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I definitely can't sing a tune, can't play an instrument. Um, sports, just not in my life. No, no, um, no. But uh, I, I don't know. I was always one of those. Uh, I was raised by my mom, single mother family. And, you know, she was a potter and had like a lot of time on, you know, she was working to raise me. So I had a lot of time on my hands to kind of, you know, either watch TV or, or do something. Or with, develop something creative in your head. To I'm yourself just kind stories. of wondering what kind of mixed feelings you have about the pottery scene then in Ghost, considering that's like your mom. <laughs> so that's kind of creepy now that I think about it. It was so confusing. Like, I mean, I was I was of the age where like watching, I mean, I, I was there. I was there. I got, I saw that <laughs> opening night. I What? Um, Are you kidding? No, that was like what 91, 92? 91, 92. Yeah. 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 We were all alive then. Well, and alive. Old, old, old memories. Yeah. That, was, that was when we rented and it, my parents were like, we should not be letting her watch this. I'm like, yeah, too late now. I mean, I'm 80 years old. And so <laughs> I, was, I was of an age where I could sneak in. I think because it was only like PG-13, right? Yeah, it yeah. really wasn't. It was just like, <gasps> yeah. yay pottery. We never put those things together before. Except the but, ancient Greeks, but you know. <laughs> I mean, because we're totally like segueing, like Ghost Eaters has... I, I I did. I I had to pay lip service to Ghost 
in Ghost Eaters with the Unchained Melody karaoke. Yes. <laughs> oh my darling. Like that's like you, you that's yeah. That's, it is that's it's my... like the epitome of ghost story songs now. You can't hear that without going, Oh, that's that's from Ghost. That's from Ghost. And I've had to choreograph there. that for like wedding songs before, and I'm just like wedding dances, and I'm like, this is from Ghost. This like, is a little <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> but don't you feel like when people will forget that it's from Ghost? Like when we've moved on, like when the next generation picks up that Maybe. song, it's gonna be. It'll just if it gets repurposed to something else that it gets enough. It's gonna be like on a TikTok. Yeah. Okay. Because my my seven year old right now is obsessed with Back to the Future, so he keeps talking about the power of love, and I'm like, I have not heard this song in forever, but now he still associates it with Back to the Future. He's like, Is that a popular song? I'm like, Thirty years ago, sure, yeah. but way back in 1985. Yeah. Don't take money. Don't take, fame. Don't take no credit card to ride this train. Look at you. you da, 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 and da, 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 da. Cannot carry a tower of love. On this show. <laughs> you should just do yeah. karaoke tonight, right? That's the. Um, yeah. Oh, That's you know, goal. we have threatened to do things like let's do a live game of D&D, &D, mm -hmm. but we have not had somebody say we should do karaoke. So now I feel like. Clay, we're going to invite you back for our Christmas eggnog extravaganza where we oh, Christmas carols, where we drink eggnog and get drunk on camera and mm -hmm. and sing yeah. I want hippopotamus for Christmas. <laughs> That's my Christmas jam. Me too. I, you have drawn the line in the sand. All I got to do is cross it. I'll just wait for the invitation. But I will see you. I will see it's you in, in December. Yes, yeah, see you in. It. But <laughs> meanwhile, we would love to talk to you about. The ghost eaters want to get haunted. Yeah. Should um, I take this pill? Do it. Oh my God, don't do it. Don't do For it. The record, she's taking a probiotic. Wow. <laughs> I love um, how this is like the closest thing you have to ooh, spooky drugs. I mean, I, I have my apple cider vinegar gummies. I know. Well, I, I have like gummies them. and I'm just like, I feel like that doesn't have the right vibe to no. it. It's it has to be a capsule. Yes. Yes. With oh, questionable man. powder inside. Yeah. So, uh, Clay, I bought this book uh, before we had you scheduled to be on the show, and I just fell so hard in love with the cover. And then yeah. I started reading it, and uh, within, like, I think 10 minutes, Allison was, like, sold. I'm getting mm -hmm. it. Well, and, and the weird thing was, for, for Jen and I, this is one of those times when our brains were working in tandem and we didn't know it. I yeah. was trying to get it from my library and my card wasn't working. So I had to go in there, figure out which of my kids had an overdue book, get that <laughs> solved. And then I could download it. So I was already starting it too, but she had a physical copy and I'm like, I'm listening to it. You didn't listen to it. Did you, Jen? You just read no, it. No, I read phone? it with my eyeball. Okay. So I listened. So we had two different experiences there, but, but yeah, both of us was... were like, get, get him, go stalk him. Find. We don't yeah. stalk <laughs> authors on this show. No, we don't. We, and when we do, it's very benevolent. <laughs> Benevolent stalking. I yeah, it's it's sweet. Right. Yeah, and then like, it's not like we figure out everything about you and just like <laughs> that's you. That is I'm, me. I don't do that. I'm totally, totally curious. What was the listening experience like? It uh, was really good. I really enjoyed it, but I'm also like an audible junkie. the The narrator was was perfect, and Elizabeth, I mean, I, only, yes. no, I I had no complaints with it. Yeah, uh, Alan agrees. The audio book is great. Um, that was, that was, my, that's my preference because with small children running around, that's only quiet I get is just putting my yeah. ears on, blocking them out. And then I do everything else with it. Um, yeah. but I would highly recommend the audiobook. and there's some books that I enjoyed, but I would say mm, maybe use your eyeballs for this one, but this is definitely a good audio. Did you not get a chance to listen to it or just not sure what you think of having your words read by some strange person? I mean, it's, it's funny. I, uh, I am, I'm terrified of of listening to to them so i i uh and it has nothing to do with the people responsible for them elizabeth i've actually known elizabeth uh the narrator mm -hmm. for years like like maybe close to 15 20 years um but this is the first time we've kind of intersected on this that. level um Yay. so it was just such a kind of treat to, mm -hmm. to have her you know, read this, read this story. So do you get uncomfortable? Like, let's say 
you're doing an interview and I'm not going to do this to you. And somebody goes like, I'm going to read an excerpt of your book to you. <laughs> like I could do it because it's still on my I'm book. like, I could do it because I like have it next yeah. to me, but I'm not going to. But I've been on interviews where people are like, do you mind if I just read a chunk of this? And I'm like, I'm going to throw up. Could we not? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I wouldn't, not without warning you. I, w I would be, I mean, ultimately I would feel touched because- It is I, it's always so such a beautiful experience, but I'm like, what if they read something and people go, you know, that really isn't that great. Like, <laughs> I mean, oh, you I mean, picked that section? You picked that one? No. But that's the thing. That's the thing. Isn't it more interesting to know what section or what line or what whatever it is that they respond to? Yes. Like, I mean, like hearing it out loud, you know, having it be shared and kind of like having to kind of like, uh, indoor, in you know, like, it, yeah. like that, that is, that's one thing, but like, like, Hey, here's, here's a section that I really responded to. And yeah. I want to share that like that, like for me, like, it's kind of like, Oh, that's really, yeah. I don't know. That's really cool because you never know what, you never what know section what it's going pick. to be. Right. Especially when, you know, you write darker, weirder things, let's say, and somebody is just like, <laughs> like, this is the part that like touched my soul. And you're like, oh yeah, it wasn't just like a book of like a bunch of creepy things and like um, mushroom hallucinations. It was more yeah. than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I always, I, you know, there's that, that strange rubric where you say to yourself, okay, you know, when you write about these these weird creepy things you know as we do uh it's the person who comes up to you like say you're doing a reading somewhere and someone comes up to you and they're like that part that i love that part where you read about the you know the dead body and the like the <laughs> oh near you know, the like, end Ooh, yeah, yeah i'm not gonna think about Ooh, that. but then you say to yourself like okay it's very nice meeting you thank you very much like, <laughs> like we would kind of like you know like the engagement of like <laughs> meeting meeting people who respond to your work when your work is out there yeah it's like are you a serial killer and also a fan of me but like <laughs> yeah i prefer it if people look at me and go well you seem so normal and like you're like happy and you're like smiling and then you know i read something and it was like oh geez louise <laughs> yeah absolutely like that's um, always fun yeah come back to my basement please i have oh, yeah. <laughs> Like, I, have I would like to read you. some of my poetry to you that I <laughs> only read to mother. <laughs> Clay, oh, please don't go with anybody to their basement. Then you won't be able to come and sing with us at Christmas. <laughs> don't do that. Why, why did Clay not RSVP to our, our Christmas? Oh, I heard he was <laughs> murdered. <laughs> by a, a, a allegedly. Man's like, allegedly murdered. Allegedly. But yeah. meanwhile, I'm listening to your podcasts in the basement of this like subterranean torture den, where <laughs> say, my like captor old Victorian <laughs> mansion, and they're like, you're gonna listen to all of their interviews, even the ones that go way too long and they drink too much alcohol, and it goes like off the rails. So you mean with Josh Mallerman? Is there Josh? Some Josh yeah, Mallerman yeah. two hour interview? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's the What's the record? Is it two hours? It's, that it gets Mallerman, it's, and it's, it's about two. It's almost two hours. Yeah. There's There's honestly no beating Mallerman in in life. Not in for that. general. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm, we knew he came to the table with a bottle of bourbon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was like, oh, we each just have one. We have a cup. Here. We have a cup. But Allison actually had her bottle next what? to her. And halfway through the interview, my husband like went up and like off screen handed me a bottle. And I was like, OK, we're doing it. Throwing down. Oh, yeah. Wow. We didn't feel okay. really well the next day. And Regina says, I really want to drunkenly shout Bridgerton at that reference. Because, yeah, it went off the rails because we were talking about Bridgerton half the time. And I'm going, I did not expect the interview with horror and speculative fiction author Josh Mallerman to all be Bridgerton focused. I don't and know we, like we're talking about the show, too, not even yes. the Bridgerton books. So yes. it, was like <laughs> it, was, it was just it was just he was fascinated with that. And I'm going, how did we get here? I don't understand. And that's that's usually most of our shows. This, is why, our we got this here. is why we're called word vomit. Yes. <laughs> so nobody's done actual vomit. So let's keep that vomit free since 93. Let's always do that. Yeah, that's our show. Yeah, he will always, she will always associate him with that now. Me too, me too. And I'm like thinking that's probably not, he, he's like Bird Box, and Goblin, Daphne, and Bridgerton. <laughs> Why not? And Why a not? nice romantic love story. Well, so, wanna, go ahead, Jen. I was going to say, Clay, have you always been focused on the darkness? 
Like, even when you were like were a kid and writing stories, did you write? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Were you always a creeper? Is what we're, we're asking. Yeah. Nice oh, yeah. I'm a creeper. That's not a nice way to put it. No, but it's true. <laughs> I mean, like, I, you know, I don't. I don't know if I necessarily wear it with pride, but like, you know, like I, I, I was definitely like one of those kids, like there was the neighborhood, mm -hmm. like I was in the suburb and there were the kids that you were kind of cordoned off with because mm -hmm. they were the same age as you. Yes. You couldn't, like you were just stuck with that group yep. of neighborhood kids because that was your generation. That was your mm -hmm. age set. And we were the ones who would ride around our bikes, but they were all, this is terrible, and I'm not ju judging, but they were but, all very jock jockey or oh, yeah. jock uh, yeah. yeah, like 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 clean cut, and you know, I wasn't like some like feral child or anything like that. But, like, <laughs> and here comes Clay covered in mud, <laughs> smells <laughs> like cat litter and maple syrup. What is going on? But you know, like there's always that one. There's like that one kid who who's just kind of like. The, the 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 engagement is just like a little off center. It's just like a little, like, it's kind of like, I have parasites. Like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like, think you're talking to a two of those people right now. Uh, pretty right? much. Yeah. yeah. No, and we lived yeah. in a cul-de-sac for a while. So that was very, very well cordoned off. Cause like you're in the loop, you're there. They're the ones who are playing softball. Like, Come on out and play. I'm like, sport, I can try that. <laughs> yeah. Can we see I mean, the thing that fell off my tree and it's kind of rotten? Yeah, they didn't yeah. want to see that. Yeah, I was it's very so unathletic awesome. and like riding bikes with kids. I was always the one who like fell off my bike and like was injured while we're trying to sneak into a movie. And I'm like asking the people to at that work there if like for ice because then I'm like crying. I was that kid. And people are like, just get it together. <laughs> I uh I miss those that that group. But like I, I, you know, it was always, it was always kind of, and I'm sure they would have maybe a different kind of outside looking in perspective on it. <laughs> we should um, interview them. Who <laughs> was like as a child? What did he but, do? But I, I mean, like there is, I think there is some, there is like the internal life that you live as a, as an like a whatever indoor kid or as the, <laughs> as the person who is not yes. necessarily like, yeah. like. It, like to the frequency of the mainstream, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I I don't I don't know. I like indoor kid is just a very me too. It's like an indoor specific. cat. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't sound so bad. It doesn't. I know. I'm no. like, I, was, I was just an indoor kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I I like to swim. I was a swimmer. I that was that was my it's kind like, of like you a swimmer? City swim. You swim? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, butterfly. I, I did butterfly in 500 free because I was the only one who didn't complain about it. Oh my god! That's <laughs> I did the nice. hardest things. Like, can I do butterfly? Not well. Did I look like it was drowning every time? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's like that's mm -hmm. that, that is the like I am. That's that, also how I threw out my back and had to have uh, Coach Cullinane pull me out completely, which is like I don't know how he did it, but he was very very strong. Oh lordy, lordy, <laughs> yeah. lordy! That's. That's no joke. I, you know, like, like 400, what is it? The I am the, the I am. Yeah, no, I can't do the I am because the I am requires you to do backstroke. And I just keep bashing into the lane lines because my backstroke, I'm just like, where am I going? <laughs> <laughs> not um, straight. That's where I'm not going. I, I liked backstroke. My worst stroke was uh, breaststroke. Because I was more of a leisurely breaststroker. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's like the old ladies with her hair up. That's yeah. like, you know, if I had one accident, you stay above the water. Yeah. Um, I was a, a dog paddler breaststroker, but uh <laughs> backstroke, I was I was I was actually okay at backstroke. Um well I don't I don't know how I got off on that tangent, but that that was my that was, that was the my, one outdoor thing that, because you're outdoor thing. That was my outdoor thing. But that's my power, frequently sunburned. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I went to school for theater and I was a dancer, so I, that's indoor. We indoor. Keep them indoors. Indoor. Indoor. Style. Keep me pale. <laughs> keep me pale. You know what goes good indoors? Mushrooms. <laughs> Everybody who hasn't read this book is probably like, "Why is Allison playing with mushrooms?" This is not the first time I brought mushrooms on a show. I actually should have like a Goodreads shelf for mushroom fiction, fungal fiction. Is that a thing? Well, give I want fungal story. fiction. Somebody just, um, one of my favorite uh, booksellers in the world, Ryan, she did a whole oh, yeah. wall of this, like, spore horror. Yeah. Spore horror. Okay, spore. well, spore. Spore. Oh, yeah, I'm like, you're going to send that to me because I need that, and I like yeah. it. And I was just like, all of these aren't about mushrooms. And then I'm like, 
thinking back and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah they are. <laughs> we are we are absolutely in a fungal renaissance right now, right? Like this I is like- are. I didn't know that was a thing, but I'm glad it is. I, I mean, you know, I, I, I think it's, I mean, it's always been there and that's the creepy thing. Like it's always, like there has always been this kind of low grade fungal horror. Like Spore mm -hmm. has just like, like it just bubbles up every so often. Well, it's because like at urban legend wise, I think everybody as a kid has heard mm -hmm. that story of like, oh, the little children in the backyard who had a tea party and picked mushrooms and they ate it and they all died. So, yes. <laughs> so stay inside your house, Jennifer, stay inside. Yeah. That's uh, right along with the kids who fed their turtle pop rocks and the turtle exploded. Eighties, <laughs> that's the eighties. Do you know that story, Jen? You haven't heard that one? No. Mm -hmm. Was it always the turtle? I think I it heard was always it. the turtle. That's the only person I, think I, I heard, ever heard it. Heard. I heard it was like a person, like a no. little boy no, ate no. a bunch of pop rocks boy, and like no. drank Coca Cola and like his stomach exploded. It was someone did it to a turtle. It probably happened to me that way because I had a pet turtle for a while. Yes. Probably someone told me that thinking it would freak me out, but I was mostly like, "Ooh, really? That poor turtle." Well, let me let me ask, where He's is welcome. life for you? Where where do you live? Where's the I mean, well, okay, I grew up in Orange County, so that was I've pretty much always been in this area other than originally Pennsylvania, but been out here and then I just wander around to beaches for school. Yeah. I, and I, I am in beaches. the Northeast. <laughs> I am in New England. I'm in New Hampshire. Yeah. And, but for a while, the Midwest, but born and bred in New Hampshire. And now I live back here in New Hampshire. And Under a pile of house. <laughs> a pile of snow most of the time. And a big pile of snow where it's always dark. Wow. So do you think that the pop rock urban legend is something that like, if you lived in California, it would be the turtle. If you lived in New Hampshire, it would be the, the child. Like I... Which, it could be because I yeah. do feel like reptiles, especially something like a turtle, we have better luck with turtles out here where it's warm. I feel like all the reptiles, like turtles would just freeze where Jen lives. That would just, poor turtles would just yeah, be Yeah, like, yeah. You have to like yeah. get lamps and heat yeah. them and stuff. I mean, we had, I had too, a crab habitat for a while. Um, when did I you just say a crab attack? I did have a crab attack for a while. For a hermit crab? Uh, for many hermit crabs. I, Roman and I traveled to New Hampshire with our crab attack. We called it Downton <laughs> Crabby. And, uh, but then we lost power for like four days and all of our crabs died. Terribly sad story. Oh, that's yeah. tragic. I know. That's Edith, my favorite crab, and also my favorite character in Downton Abbey, she survived the longest, but. Go eat that story it. took a dark turn at the end. I know. Though. I know. <laughs> I was like, oh, how cute. Oh. Oh, I know. <laughs> Everyone's like, you had crabs? Wait, well, don't say it that way either. <laughs> I know. And then we fed them pop rocks, and <laughs> the crabs. And then what happens inside the shell with the pop rocks? <laughs> oh, God, Maybe it's just the shell. That's the problem. I mean, I think that was part of it. Is they were talking about it couldn't expand because it's in a shell. So if you did it to a person, you don't have a shell around your abdomen. You're fine. Also, we're a lot bigger than a turtle. We are. That's so, uh, have you always been like a, a mushroom guy, or do they scare you? No, well, they scare I mean, me. Yes, absolutely. I mean, there are there are some amazing. I mean, like I I feel like before you get to something like Mexican Gothic, uh, if you if you look at um, you know John Langan, um, Ramsey Campbell, um, there 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 are all these kind of authors who would like write like a fungal horror short story, mm -hmm. um, but. Uh, you know, it's so funny because like for ghost eaters, I I I, I did not intend it to be uh, about a mushroom. Um, I really, no? like it was, well, not, you know, I started mapping it out um, and you know, the, the kind of the weird backstory uh, or at least the partial backstory is that, you know, I um, I had been, ta I, I, I like occasionally get to write and develop film scripts, screenplays. And um, I was developing a project, a feature project for this production company. And it was going to be about a haunted drug um, or, you know, a drug that like a, a hallucinogenic that was more in line with like LSD or some sort mm -hmm. of, kind of yeah. chemical, like a, like a, like we're going to dose on this and we're going to go to a concert and it's going to be really cool. Um, but It Follows had just come out. So mm -hmm. like, they were like, oh, it could be they take this drug and they see a, like a Freddy Krueger kind of 
character and that that demon killer whatever it is will will stalk them and is it a hallucination or is it real and um yeah. only only the kids who took the drug can see him and um the project collapsed and didn't go anywhere but um, <laughs> but but someone said the word like the two words haunted drug mm -hmm. and yeah for and the then that's that's I mean honestly like that's all it took like I just I couldn't stop thinking so much. sorry <laughs> <laughs> no I love that and I mean like when I read the premise of this book like a haunted drug it's super addictive you can see your dead loved ones like people going oh hey you want to get can haunted see loved you can see dead people are they always yeah. loved ones yeah <laughs> but I mean it's a very it's a very intriguing premise to want to obviously connect with our dead yeah. and because it's not only is this story about addiction and haunting yeah. and mushrooms it's also a grief story and yeah. a friendship story and it's like very heart of hearts yeah. yeah i mean you know i i feel like the the kind of other end of the the kind of genesis spectrum is that i you know, and, and I'm, I, I feel like I, you know, need to be forthright about this. Like I, like I had, I had a friend who passed away due to his addictions. And, you know, I was, I was like Aaron where like, I, I wasn't there. Like I, I was one of those friends, like we were amongst like a group of friends, a circle of friends and we supported and, and took care of this friend. Um, mm -hmm. And then I like it got to a point where like I drew a line and said and and I thought the tough love thing was going to be the best thing yeah. for yeah. for him. And and so like I pulled out like I I I I kind of held my ground and like stopped kind of helping him when he needed help. And you know m not much later he he passed away and you know for me, the the kind of moment of learning that and discovering that and and just being like, oh my God, like I I I failed him. Like I wasn't there for yeah. him. And, and and like immediately it became this this kind of um like the the kind of uh you know the the kind of interrogation of why why did I do that when the, you know that clearly wasn't the 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 kind of solution. And that group of friends like I'm no longer in that circle and you know like it's it's just you know all of that stuff which happened years ago like you know like over 10 years ago now almost 10 geez almost 10 years ago um like it it it, it it's not that kind of an a to b causality of like that story is ghost eaters but it was it was that kind of notion of like when you have a friend that you love and they are kind of succumbing to their addictions and you have to kind of figure out like you know like like that that was all of the kind of like emotional kind of driving force of like yes. getting into ghost eater so the grief is it's real it's mine yeah. and um, i mean it felt real and you know like i always tell people they're like well what kind of horror do you write and i was like well i tend to write grief horror yeah or you know trauma horror and they're like what is grief horror that's not a thing and i'm like it is a thing <laughs> i'm like have you read pet cemetery because that's a book yes. about grief that's like, kind of like, the yeah that's, that's kind of what this is yeah that's and just kind of the so in ghost eaters like I, I just i was just like so in love with it because i'm like it's combining so many things i love and i don't <laughs> it sounds like so weird to say but it's like things i'm very passionate about creatively yeah Oh, it's so funny. It's interesting you mentioned Pet Cemetery because I had my last, my last kind of beta reader for the book um, was this good friend uh, Nat um, Nat Cassidy, who's also an amazing author. He wrote uh, a book called Mary, which came out last year. Um, he he read it, and he you know we it was it was kind of like this is the last chance I have to fix anything. Like help me, like you know, like and. No, and he was please, like, please. That's what your beat is do. Please fix this for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, it was basically the rest this for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he was like, Oh, you gotta pull a pet cemetery at the end. And and I was like, What do you mean? Like, I was like, 
like it's so funny how you know I, I mean I've read that book I, I've I've read that book like at least three times seen the movie however many times both movies uh of the sequels and you know it wasn't until Nat said oh you gotta build a pet cemetery that I was but like went, oh they're oh oh, oh. <laughs> oh. And, yeah I <laughs> sorry now I have the Ramon song stick in my head I don't, don't want to be buried in a pet cemetery. Karaoke, guys. Come on. We got to do it. We, this <laughs> we is, got it. Like, we got we're it. already setting the, the track list, the song list. I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. My first book uh, is called Beautiful, Frightening, and Silent. And it is a grief horror story about a haunted island where if you want it bad enough, you can see, you know, the people that you love that are dead. But wow. is it really them? It wasn't until, like, I'd been, like, on a podcast and somebody was just, like, so how much of this, you know, like this is such a, it's so similar to Pet Cemetery in ways. And I was like, it is not. And then I'm like, oh my God. Well, <laughs> thank say, you. Huge father, compliment. dead child, <laughs> reconnect with dead child. I mean, it's kind of on the nose. I know, I it was kind of on that. the nose. I didn't know that when I was writing it. I was really like, this is completely original. <laughs> I mean, There are no I, completely original no, thoughts. There. There's a whole genre of fungal fiction. Who I mean, who knew? Yeah. Um, but we're in that renaissance. I'm going to keep going back to fungal horror because like, yeah. you know, and I do think that the renaissance kicked off with Mexican Gothic. Mexican Gothic, oh. yeah. And, but this last year alone, like, my God, there were just so many <laughs> mushroom well, horror books. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't even know if it qualifies as mushroom, well, not as necessarily as horror, but I had on my separate podcast, To the Moon Allison, I had Benjamin Percy, The Unfamiliar Garden. So I'm like, I, this is the second time I've had mushrooms, just something I have on the show, just running around. These are less phallic than the other mushrooms. These are just like cute little baby bellas. <laughs> yeah. I didn't um, eat those. Not live. That would be weird. <laughs> I feel like you got to... I mean, like you just gotta you gotta give props to the mushroom because it is. I don't know how long the wave will last. I'm sure it'll kind of like quiet down and it'll pick up. up. Yeah. Because like I mean, like even now there's what The Last of Us on HBO. Yeah, that is, it, like which I'm refusing to watch until it's all completely done, so I can just you know binge like God intended you to watch it. Yeah, like just lay there until my you know. I feel like I might get a blood clot in my leg. Like mm -hmm. I want to just watch that one eight episodes in a row. But yeah, that is also fungal horror. But just remember today, February 1st, <clears throat> I guess we're like two to th we're three days after episode three of The Last of Us, which I think it's fair to say kind of destroyed the nation or anyone who watched. It, it did. Been and I didn't watch it, but I, I know like because... You can't be anywhere on the internet right now without and not every single person you know only talking about episode three of The Last of Us. I know. And even I though you say, either, I, I haven't watched it. it yet, they just mm -hmm. completely tell you everything that happens while crying. Yeah. And they're like, <laughs> I'm like, okay. It's, it's a total <laughs> ugly cry episode. Like, it's, it's, you gotta, it, it, you just gotta go with it. I, you know, I watched it. I love a good ugly cry. I'm not gonna it's lie. worth it it's totally worth it, it. It's, um, it's cheaper than therapy just like watch something deeply disturbing and just like scream cry your face off while your dog looks at you and shakes it's not I, i'm not gonna ruin it no spoilers but it no it's spoilers. it's amazing how un it's not unnerving it's not you know like it is such a heartwarming touching episode that just so happens to be taking place during a during fungal... a, yeah the yeah, end of the world yeah, yeah. that's fine it's, a thing. it's like so incidental to like watching watching this story unfold um and uh it's a it was a beautiful thing and uh i totally ugly cried by myself a... <laughs> just by yourself just you don't even yourself. have a dog staring at you going <laughs> you didn't even, you know, the kids were just to... like locked away so yeah. like that's not something you watch with children present, at least. Ooh. Yeah, we have things we watch after the children are in bed. And yeah. even just the trailer was on and my eldest came into the room and I'm like, freeze that, Take close your eyes. And she closed her eyes. And my husband's like, it's just a trailer. I'm like, she's easily traumatized. So just freeze all? right now. No, just my <laughs> eldest, easily traumatized. The others, not so much. But my eldest, she's like, you're watching something creepy and she can't handle it. <laughs> no, I wanted to get back. It's funny that we brought up 
yes, the Pet Cemetery reference, but there were aspects of Stephen King, the repeated aspects of certain phrases for me uh -huh. were very Stephen King. Obviously, want to get haunted, but also the whole Silas says, Silas says, yeah. like I am a yeah. sucker for repeated phrasing like that, and, and I def definitely associate that. The Stand did it a lot, but that's just something you like it it likes you that's something stephen yeah. king does a lot and i don't know if that's if there's even a term for just poetic repetition to the point where it becomes a theme in of itself because that whole silas says thing and the kind of cult of personality that devolves from there yeah that's a thing like yes we're talking about addiction and yes we're talking about grief and yes we're talking about drugs but that part to me and the fact that all these people are turning their lives around because of this other person I thought that was an interesting thing because I don't think I've seen that explored in horror as much. And then I'm like, oh, because then it's the Lockin' Man. It's just Randall Flag. Yay. Cult leader. I mean, what what I what I love about Stephen King, and like I, I feel like I I you know, I think we're all just kind of taking wholesale from Yes. From I like this. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. mm -hmm. You know, I, I would I would totally embrace the notion that he like his his the kind of repetition, but it's mm -hmm. it's it, it's it's even more than that. Where it's like it's beyond the repetition of whatever the phrase itself is. Um, it, it's it's the way that the text breaks down. Where it's like there's a sentence, mm -hmm. and then the sentence yes. kind of like cuts, cuts, just and then breaks. it's, and then there's the the, the like the whatever, thing. yeah, the yeah. lyric, the phrase, the and then you, and then it goes back to whatever the sentence was. Um, and I and I feel like that is like you're you're kind of getting access to this characters, whoever the character is, the narrator, whatever, you know, you're getting into their head for just a yeah. like a blip, and it's almost yeah. like the record skips. Yes, yes. Um, Especially yeah. the audio, because you asked how the performance was. That that aspect was captured perfectly because you've got the narration and it's just you want you want to get haunted, getting to sneaking yeah. in there and then going back to whatever it was, almost like, did I just hear that? Am I hallucinating? Yeah. Have yeah. I had mushrooms and am I hallucinating? No, I'm listening to an audiobook. <laughs> I'm sober. Yes, and you've had um, just regular mushrooms and I've only had a probiotic, so we're all good. Yeah, these are these are <laughs> They're, I, um, they're baby Bellas, guys. They're baby Bellas. There's nothing weird here. They're I, not like I, the golden teacher or something. <laughs> no, it's <was> good. <laughs> I, I do feel like I need to cop to uh, the, 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 the real kind of guiding light of the moment, maybe of the last X amount of years, in terms of that kind of repetitious style, I think is, uh, for better or worse, Chuck Palahniuk. Um, okay. Yes. You know, who, like, I, I think you could, I, I definitely think Stephen King kind of does it in such a way where it, when it happens, it just feels very abrupt and very like, oh, where Trent Polonic, his whole books, like, like. They do that. It's, it's like, it becomes almost, it's a song. Yeah. Honestly. It's like, mm -hmm. you're reading it and you're just like. It, it like transcends like what like we think of as prose. Yeah, because, exactly. because then it's a refrain rather than just oh yeah. it's another line. It's like oh no we're back to the refrain again. And love it or hate it, you know whatever however you feel about it, like it does it does kind of do something to you as the reader, mm -hmm. and um, it 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 does create a rhythm that like feels propulsive and 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 I feel like the more you repeat something a phrase, the more times you see a specific object, every time you see it, it gets heavier and heavier with emotion. Mm. And I love just like you, your use of the word haunted was every time Erin heard it or thought she heard it or it crept into her head, it got heavier. Yeah, yeah. Um, something yeah. that I've never said out loud to anybody. Oh but my I really, gosh. Um, I, I read Jonathan Franzen's The Corrections and uh, Freedom. And uh, what I found really interesting about his books is that, and, and these are large, long tomes, like 700 pages. And every so often, like in The Corrections, he would use the phrase, he would say, correction or correct. And every time it happened, it would just be like, oh my God, that word, like the word would just kind of like leap off of the page because the book is called The Corrections and like <laughs> it loses, like 
and it wasn't kind of like a like a name droppy kind of like and then they corrected them like but it, it, <laughs> it and then particularly with freedom like just and i don't know i've never read an interview with him or 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 where he speaks to this but like he would by just po poking that word it, mm -hmm. it illuminated it in such a way that that I don't know, like I, I I felt kind of inspired by that. So every for every book that I've written in the last like four years, I just find a word um, and I just hammer it to all get out in in these books. Um, I love and, it. And, well, because like it 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 allow it like by and by the time it's copy edited, like they've taken out ninety nine point nine. They're like that was too many. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm using that word over and over and over again. Um, uh, yeah, 100. Like, I get have reviews like that where it's like, it was going along really good, but she kept saying the same phrase over and over again. And I'm like, oh, I did that on purpose. Oh, God. I, uh, <laughs> Sorry, you hated it. Yeah, I am. Um, I, I wrote this one book called The Remaking. And I I have a soft spot for The Remaking. I, I personally love it. Not a, not a, not a lot of other people do, but uh, <laughs> but it's like it was my kind of fan fiction for this amazing, amazing horror movie um, called uh, Let's Scare Jessica to Death. <laughs> um, we're laughing. Jen can't actually speak right now because that's uh, so I do To the Moon Allison, which is sci fi and speculative fiction and romance because that's what I write. Jennifer does let's scare Jennifer to death. So that's where she <laughs> got it from. <laughs> she just freaked out. That's she's amazing. Like, oh. That's why I'm like, I saw that movie on like made like it was a TV movie. Like everything's edited out. I saw mm -hmm. it so many times when I was a kid because there was a station out of Boston that would play horror all the time. Oh my god! Uh, on the weekends they would do like creature double feature on Saturday and then Sundays it would just be like three horror movies in a row like all damn day. So like edited for TV, Exorcist, edited for TV. Um, so the movie's about half the to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I once but, dated a guy who his job was to edit the movies. Like he shipped something, but they edit the movies that go on airplanes because the things that are on airplanes are all super edited. So it's like some yeah. of these movies end up about half as long because, well, this is inappropriate. Well, this is also very inappropriate. Well, now I'm really, so it's called The Remaking is the, your, your book that, you yeah. love and, and and other people might not love as much and it's fan fiction of let's scare jessica to death because we need i that, feel yeah. like now i'm like <laughs> we need to buddy read that I have yeah to, let's buddy read it buddy read it well be careful because it is it is what it is um <laughs> you know what <laughs> that mean? Is be it careful. Is it that we um, should be a little concerned about or but do you I mean, okay let's talk about let's just let's scare jessica to, to death for a moment because like i what what I loved about that movie is that there's an like an interior inner monologue happening throughout the entire movie where Jessica, the character of Jessica is like hearing her own voice kind of talk back to her. Yeah. And it's always like, Jessica, Jessica, like, like, you're, you know, and it, and it like, it, it just like, all these phrases are just kind of re like just cycled through over and over again. And like, you're, you're, in her head and that was so affecting and effective to me that like when i started writing the remaking i was like i'm gonna do that i'm gonna create that inner monologue but do it on the page and like so it's like just it, it's very repetitive and it's very uh cyclical and very I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna love mm -hmm. you're saying all the things i like um i'm gonna dorky say something um it's not really self-promotion because I just signed a contract yesterday and it's nothing's even announced, but it's a short story, which is part of a collection that will be coming out at some point, who knows, um, is kind of based on my life, but I titled the character Jessica and the whole thing is like an internal crazy monologue. <laughs> there you go. Where she keeps saying like, like the same thing. And I, I didn't even think that it's, oh, I'm just doing a Let's Scare Jessica to Death thing. I literally was just like, I'm naming her Jessica because of Let's Scare Jessica to Death, but I wasn't thinking that that was a theme that they that do. Was, yeah. And you didn't realize Beautiful, Frightening, and Silent is also kind of an homage to Pet Cemetery, but on yeah. the like, And it's like all the things that like I loved as a kid, yeah. I'm just recreating yeah. now. <laughs> but, but just like in my own way. 
That's what you do. That's what we do. And hey, that's congratulations. Great. That's amazing. Um, Thank you. I'm you, excited. When do you get to tell the world about the story? I'm not sure. Yeah. I know. I'm like going, we don't even, I kept asking, like, when do we have a date? When can we start promoting and talking about it? And she's like, eh, eh. I'm like, I legitimately just signed a contract. Yes. <laughs> and Regina is congratulating you too. Oh, thank you. Cool. But yeah, I'll, I'll be jamming it down everybody's throats. Uh, <laughs> trust me. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, I will. I'm seeing because Regina said sentient probiotics. Our gut feelings really your gut feelings. <gasps> when you say driving it on people's throats, she's not talking about your book. She's talking about probiotics, but she's talking about like damn damn down for knowledge. Either yeah. way, is fine. Pop another probiotic and let's get Pop digesting. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> My probiotics are also gummies. So again, more gummies. Don't need those. I thought like I was looking like at my like in my medicine cabinet. I'm like, what is a capsule? What would look like <laughs> ghost does in this book or how I imagine it? And I'm like, mm, I have some dog medication. <laughs> nope. I can take my kids out or all. I would love that. I would you would oh, you'd so. want to see me on that'd be kind of funny. Like we do not dabble in recreational drugs. We're not in the past I did that. do no. that, but mm -hmm. I do not do that anymore. No, like my, I'm a my water now. tab in my hospital cup here is focus. <laughs> Take that for whatever it might mean. Yeah, I have a bottle of water here that has vitamin B in it. Yeah, I think That's my like husband's strong. Maybe, as I, I don't know. Yeah, and I occasionally get or a little bit like, what is happening? Just plain water. Plain water. Possibly with fungus in it. We don't know. We I'm pretend. the designated driver for the night. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. So, can I ask before we end? Yeah. Clay, do you do you teach at the actors studio? Totally, yeah. Um, they have <laughs> they have an MFA program uh, that's kind of attached to uh, Pace University here in New yeah. York. Mm -hmm. um, and you know they get actors in, they get directors in, and they get writers in. And uh, <laughs> my my uh, I, I teach a screenwriting workshop for playwrights. So basically, my goal is to convince these playwrights to come over to the dark side and uh, of screenwriting like do you ever want to make money or do anything you must be <laughs> the dark side come to hollywood this is where the money is made children <laughs> your soul will be dead but it doesn't matter no, you can buy I mean, more you could be like friend of the show simon stevenson and write luca which was a lovely pixar movie and one of my exactly. kids favorites and then we have because he just signed for another screenplay and i'm like i hope this one also has happy meal merch for my kids that was a very weird way of congratulating him, I'm sure. He's like, yeah. He's like not really what we were talking about here, Allison. All right. No, if there can be, you know you've made it if you are the originator of McDonald's merch, Happy Meal merch. Yes. That's that's yeah. like, that that's is. Like, nothing I write would ever end up anywhere near McDonald's stuff, but it's a it's a good benchmark. I mean, we're, we're talking, <laughs> let's know. scare Jessica to death. We're talking, you know, Haunted islands like, with haunted dead islands, ones. Uh, haunted mushrooms, mm. and like just like just like friends, just being friends and hanging out. And if you know, if, if, if there wasn't like a hamburglar or a grimace or any of those, I like, mean, there could be like they're a, all terrifying. Yeah, it could be like a ghosty. <laughs> um, um, I love that you just did. Like for uh, people who are just listening to the audio of this. They Please go happens. to our YouTube and our Facebook and watch this interview. Like, watch us. <laughs> it'll make more sense, I promise. It, it, it'll make more sense. And Clay did, like, an amazing, like, there's no business, like, show business <laughs> dance. But isn't that the, that's the grimace one. He had the, like, <laughs> yeah. he had the, like, got, like my kids always say little nubblies. They like to shake their little nubblies. This, like, they all, they only have little hands. Little nubblies. Oh, oh my God. Um, oh. Regina, I'm a little worried. Uh, have you guys seen Mick Sabbath? No. No. I have no idea what that is. We're going to have an explanation for that later. Really that's, that's fine. That's fine. We'll figure that out later. But so you try to you try to have the actors come over. And it was funny because earlier we were talking about possibly having maybe reading or me playing part of your audio book and seeing how you react. And I was just wondering if you're going to pull an Adam Driver and just leave the interview. <laughs> Mic drop. I'm out. Mic drop. Done. That's it. I'm done. I'm, I'm over. I'm what? What's going on here? No. And no. Allison, good for you working Adam Driver in at minute forty nine. Contractually, I'm obligated to do so. 
And is there <laughs> is there an Adam Driver record? Like what's how what's the earliest that Adam has come into? Oh. Probably like, like, like probably during the introduction. One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we so Allison and I met years ago now. Um, and we both had written a book and we baited for each other, and both of our main characters were named Adam. Strangely. That is not a coincidence for reason. And uh yeah, and then I was reading her book and I'm like, well, she, it's like she's describing Adam Driver. Oh, I know his name is Adam. And then she was like, I was just kept picturing Adam Driver would be great in this if it was a movie. And I'm like, well, that's like, I based it on him. And we were like, oh, great, amazing. So uh, we instantly bonded and we're like, yeah. we need to do a podcast together. Originally, I wanted to call it Drive Time, where we just mm -hmm. watched every episode of Girls, but only reacted to the Adam Driver parts. Yeah. That's still Fortunately, out. that is not what we ended up doing because I don't think that would have had the legs. Okay, thank thankfully Regina is explaining. She says it's a Black Sabbath cover band, but they are all Ronald McDonald and Burglar. And she says, think Guar, but more Aussie and French fries. I would so do that. Uh, I had a boyfriend who was super into Guar and had to explain to me what it was. I'm just going. I am very intrigued, and I sense myself falling down a rabbit hole later tonight. <laughs> looking that up, we're gonna be finding that later. It's fair. There's a lot of homework assignments tonight. We gotta, mm -hmm. we gotta find our Max Sabbath. Our, mm -hmm. uh, we gotta rewatch Let's Scare Jessica to death. To like, death. We've, we've gotta like learn about for Christmas Richard songs. Franzen. No, Jonathan Franzen. That we've gotta then go and ask about like where was the inspiration for this. Not that he's gonna return our calls, but we can try. Yeah, yeah. we've got a lot for to sure. do. We gotta Gosh, get Adam Driver. Yeah. How are we going to get Adam on the show? I mean, first like, training orders, I'm sure, would provide us getting anywhere near that one. <laughs> I know. I'm like, like, no. God, he would be petrified. He would literally. No, oh, no, maybe he would do it. Clay, do you know people? You know fancy people. You know people. Do you know any people like that? Do you know Adam Driver? Do, do you live in Brooklyn? Theoretically, because <laughs> theoretically, do you live near him? Does he? Oh, he's, Adam. He's a neighbor. Yeah. We, 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 we. He's your manny. He's your manny. <laughs> But do you remember girls? Like, do you remember yes. seeing them in yes. girls? And yes. How, that was pre Adam Driver, Adam Driver. That's yeah, before. Yeah, but that's when I fell in love with him. Yeah. Fell in. Uh, my poor husband's watching this. Like, can you please yeah. stop saying you're in love with Adam Driver? Yeah, we're not supposed to say that publicly. Restraining order, Jen. Restraining he order. He was so, I mean, like, I, so he was mid -summer the reason to watch. Like, I, I felt so compelled to watch him because, like, he. He made no sense to me because he was mm -hmm. this tall, gangly, like, ears. like the ears, no. ears. Like it was his hair was shorter. His hair oh was shorter. Yeah. He was, and it was just like, and he wasn't likable, but he was incredibly like lovable. But like mm -hmm. electric on the screen. Like I'm gonna like be dorky and just be like, as an actor or as a former actor, like I just like love watching performances that I don't know what the hell the actor is going to choose. Yeah. Next. Mm -hmm. and it could it could be anything and yeah. you'd go that's fair that's well and jen i don't know if i told you i finally got to see white noise so i'm happy <gasps> you saw it i'll talk to you about it later again i haven't seen it yet. Harder. see is he and this is the thing because this is how we we are appreciating him as an actor and not just as anything else because he has like dad bod and like the least attractive <laughs> 80s haircut possible. It's a bad 80s haircut, Doesn't but matter. I also Doesn't watched House of Gucci, Gucci and I was fine yeah. with that. Don't care. Yeah. Don't care. It's fine. It's all good. So yeah, Clay, <laughs> like, like, uh, I for you. yeah, like all this has became the Adam Driver podcast. That's uh, okay. Clay, we can make also, Silas Adam Driver in the movie version. That is not how I pictured Silas in, at all. That's in a hot Hollywood minute, I would embrace Adam. I would be on set and be like, "Hi, Mr. Driver." Uh, <laughs> yeah, like, uh, oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, you're so tall. Cast, and... Like the, the key four, who would you cast? And go. Oh my god! Well, just shaking I his mean, head. Adam you Driver. Plays people. Adam Driver plays every role. No, yeah. no he's totally. He can play Tobias though, because he can do both parts. Well, for okay. Sure. So, truth told, uh, mm -hmm. well, Adam Driver for Silas, Tobias. Yes. Did you see that? It's there was hard. this TV show that lasted, I think, three to four seasons called Search Party. Yes. Yeah. She did. Oh my god. Who? Yes. The gawky tall guy. The gawky tall guy. Yeah. The, the boyfriend of the boyfriend. The... Yeah. He was. He was always my Tobias. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna have to look that up then. Search Party I is, is one of friend. the best shows you will ever watch. Yeah. 
What is I it on? It. Um, I don't know. Sometimes okay. we watch things that might not be legally obtained. <laughs> I think it was. I, I mean, think it was Netflix. Netflix. It was on HBO. HBO. I think it was on HBO. Think, yeah, because um, it started. Um, like I think it started on a different. Service. And that happens sometimes and where it does HBO that and then it finally bottom. moves stuff over. Yeah, I think like it is the HBO. last school that way. It's so yeah. good. Yeah, I. Oh, it, he it, is a good Tobias. He was, yeah, he was. I, I wrote. I, I was watching Surge Party as I was writing it. You. So he, he was always, he was always the guy. He was always my Tobias. So if you're oh listening, Mr. Tall. Gawky, Mr. Lane. Tall, Gawky. I know, as we've really described him so well, we can't remember his I'm character's sure, name, and I'm sure the actor's wait name. Wait a second. Hey, I'm not Gawky. Yes, you are. That's actually what it says on your call sheet. Looking for call, tall I mean, and Gawky. That's you. He, but here's the thing. He does tall and Gawky so well. It is, I, I mean, he is. I, he I was like in, he was, gawky. yeah. And so to have him opposite, uh, like fictionally, like uh, an Adam Driver, who is also you know, abnormally okay. tall. Now you need really tall women or they're going to have really problems getting people in the same shot because hey, if they could do it during Lord of the Rings and make that look right. Yeah. Like, um, <laughs> it'll be forced perspective. That's different. <laughs> Just have, have the girls stand in the boxes. Part. Yeah. 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 Seriously. They're wearing um, little cans on their feet. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> sad. Like, still like, small. I, uh, Who do you want for Aaron or Amara? See, that's the thing. Like, Aaron, I, I always imagine Brittany Murphy. Um, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Like, which feels, I don't know if that's appropriate, but that was like, like you can I, still cast her in your, in your dream cast yeah. and yeah. someone channeling something similar. That's, yeah. that's fair, but there will never be another. Oh. Brittany Murphy. Um, oh, gosh. And, and it's so funny because I don't know who would play Amara, but like, I mean, I could know. volunteer if you get the right cast. I feel like Adam <laughs> Driver was there. Yeah. Like, I'll just um, like, I, I could try. I'll get some, some wicked Botox and try to like <laughs> yeah, somehow be in my 20s again. Just up. like, D I'm older than Jennifer, so I'm not allowed to throw you under the bus for being too old for a role. <laughs> but I'm going to say we're a little. We're a little, we're a little 20 years too late. <laughs> a little 20 years too late. Just, just, we're, we're like, <laughs> just a little 20 years. Just oh, a couple decades. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, with, the, with the right the lighting. Sequel. The sequel. We we could talk Ghost Eaters too. The ghost. Ghost the Eaters too. Amara's super old now. <laughs> She's like. Um, I, uh, ghost Eaters too. Electric Boogaloo. The eatering. Um, the Amara. Eatering. Was, <laughs> Amara was like she like that was the most kind of direct correlative to a person that I know. Um, so like I, there's, there's no one in my mind other than the person. Other than your, your friend. Or like, yeah. I'm sure clearly. they would do it if you paid them. I don't know. They, I don't know <laughs> if they knew that they are the character. So like, no, I and think. I do the same thing. Mine's always a blend of real people and then actors. So it's like, I've, I've had this idea. I would love to have, I can't Photoshop, but if I could Photoshop a poster for the extended bourbon books cast with all the people in it, it would be like actor, actor, actor guy. I worked with actor. actor. <laughs> And he's gonna be like, we barely yeah. knew each other. Why am I on your movie yeah. poster? Yeah, I mean, I've I've sent people pictures like this is who Melinda really is, and they're like, really? I'm like, yes, we're gonna have her played by Karen Gillan in the movies, but that's fine. <laughs> there are no movies. If there were, I was gonna say if if and when they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, but I do the same thing because it's a lot easier to say, oh, hey, here's some celebrities. And one of my friends, she's always sending me very young looking, very pretty people in bands and models. I'm like, I don't know who they are because I'm really uncool. You know, you know people ask me like, better than my me. books and I'm like, I don't know, so-and-so from 20 years ago, yeah. back when like I... <laughs> back when the idea first came to you and then it percolated for... I know, where I was years, like, it's, it's Anne Hathaway, but like, but way, like, but, like Princess Diaries era. Like yeah. people are like, well, that's always the the crazy, like, that's the strange question you have to ask yourself. Like, it, you know, if we're so lucky to kind of be in that kind of like film adaptation conversation mm -hmm. and they'll always be like, well, who do you envision? And you'll be like, well, I'm not the, I'm not the, the, the proper age to kind of like, who's, who's the modern Anne Hathaway? Like who's today's. Yes. I have no idea. Okay. That's yeah. the thing. So at one point my sister like, was telling me the girls oh. from yellow jackets. Oh, well, that would work. Well, and my sister was saying, she's like, oh, I could see 
the Adam from my book. She's like, I could see this guy. And I'm like, that guy, he's on a show on the Disney Channel. Well, now he's he, Austin Butler. And he played Elvis. I'm like, oh, he's a grown up now? In my head, he's still like a 15 year old because I saw him swing on Disney Channel. So if you want actors now, you've got to look for a Disney Channel like five years ago. And then, and then that adds in like a whole now. creep factor to like yes, what your life I know. is. Where like, like... He's, he's a child, Dana, be. He's less gross, but now he's got an Oscar, I think, or nominated for nominated. Or I don't know. Nominated. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. I weirdly was. <laughs> that's fine. That's really fine. It's all good. It's okay. all good. Because I got really inspired after I watched The Banshees of Inna Sharon, and then I was just like, oh, that movie should win everything. <laughs> Like, I want for this one. This one, you know, it's, like, it's so good. good. All right, we've gone off the rails, and mm -hmm. we've just and over an hour, and and over an hour. So, Clay, you're like in our top five longest podcast. Yay! I did it. Yay! Take that, Mallerman. I'm coming for you. Um, <laughs> can you imagine? We should do like a weird. Oh God, yeah. Oh, like we need to finish like this again. Yeah, we need to have like all of our like longest guests on and just be like do a marathon. For like charity. an endurance challenge. Yeah, yeah like, like a dance day on off. August. But can you get it to go to the bathroom? Because if not, Mallerman lost right away. I mean, and no. I would lose immediately because I'm always no, like, we'll, we can have bathroom go. breaks. A, a karaoke Maller Moff, a Maller Man Off. A Maller Man Off. Who, who can out Maller Man Mallerman? Who can, oh. I'm going to tag him in this. I was just talking to him the other night and I feel like he would. Can you out Mallerman? Mallerman is not only an endurance contest for sitting and talking, also drinking. <laughs> Bridgerton references. Also Bridgerton references. Uh, and just, all right, we'll do it. Can you out Mallerman? Mallerman. Man. 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 Man, and then in parentheses, like gender neutral term. Yes. <laughs> in California, we just say dude. And in here, totally dude. dude. Very gender neutral here. Mm -hmm. All right. Clay, thank you so much for being here, uh, being very uh, game for all of our word vomit. Everybody who is watching this live or is going to be watching it on the replay or listening to it, uh, you can't see I'm holding up the really one of the best book covers I've seen in my yes. life. For the ghost eaters um okay. was that you it, the, 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 the was beeping yeah it wasn't that's here. brooklyn outside my <laughs> window yeah right i was gonna now. say it's that's not why. it's not me if there's any <laughs> noise outside it's like foxes mating yeah <laughs> that's the no, things are getting it's a little the season. rambunctious outside well thank you for being here uh, we adored you. Uh, I mean, we will definitely ask you back. Yes. Because I feel like we could just like chat it out. Mm -hmm. um, everybody, uh, stay tuned next week for Ed Amar. We're going to be talking about his book that book birthday today. I think so. No yeah. Home for Killers. Uh, so we're really Thank excited you. about that. Happy book birthday, Ed. And we will see you all next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.